Tua Tagovailoa had his latest concussion this week. His younger brother, who plays college football at Maryland, had a comment yesterday via the Associated Press. Everyone has their opinion. My brother, I know he works hard. I know he has a family now. I want my brother to be safe. But at the same time, I know that he has a love and a passion for football. I feel like he's going to make the right decision. The biggest thing is staying safe. So that is something he has to prey on. I know when it comes down to it, he will make the right decision. I just feel like he's not going to stop playing football. I feel like every opportunity he has, he's going to try to play. I don't know. It's just go until the wheels fall off. That's the problem. There are certain wheels that are critical to the operation of the vehicle. Well, you would say all of the wheels are critical to the operation of the vehicle, at least the normal operation of it. And that's where we are right now with Tua. Chris Collinsworth said in Tua's first game back from the concussion he suffered against the Bengals, it was Steelers-Dolphins on a Sunday night, he asked Tua during a production meeting, do your parents want you to stop playing football? And his response was, I don't know. Well, whatever concerns they had then are only going to be heightened when he has his latest concussion. And he's not getting hit in the helmet by a helmet or a forearm or a knee. He keeps hitting his head on the ground. Peter, the physics don't favor a guy who is smaller than the average quarterback. You get pulled down to the ground. Your your head whips into it. And that's what we've seen three times from two of this year. So it is very concerning for his long-term health and future and safety. And I, 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 I don't know what the right thing to do is. You know, people have been raising the question this week, should he shut it down for the rest of the year? Well, if you're cleared, why would you? The broader question is, do you shut it down for good? And that's only a question that he can answer unless and until the NFL mechanism, and this is a point I've been making this week, at some point the NFL machine decides we can't have this two or three times a year to a Tonga-Vailoa concussion, and everybody's talking about it, and there's all this focus on head injuries. We, we, we can't have that. We just can't have that. And that would be wrong to basically shun him over it, but I feel like that's where it's heading. You know, Mike, I think as we sit here on December 30th um, in, you know, the late stages of the regular season in 2022, it's one of those things that you and I can sit here and to discuss this and try to digest it. And I think the common sense approach is to say too much head trauma for one year. And whatever Tua can get, a, a noted good whatever neurologist to say shouldn't it be the common sense approach to say that he shouldn't play football anymore this year and he should go into a period where you know he just settles down takes a long winter's nap and basically uh continues to do what the smartest neurologists in the world tell him to do and then let's revisit this on about March 15th, see how he is, see what all the tests show us and all that. Because I just know there are so many guys who now are having major problems who, and again, look, the 80s were a different time in the NFL where there weren't concussion spotters upstairs. But what I'm saying is guys who had every marble that they were born with uh, while they were playing football and then retired and everything was fine, a few years later, all of a sudden, things aren't fine. So I think I would say, if I, and Mike McDaniel, I, I, I really feel started to say this the other day that, you know, this is not a time for Tua to be thinking about playing football. He just needs to rest, you know, however McDaniel's termed it, McDaniel termed it, that he's right. This is a time for Tua Tagovailoa to take it easy and to just let things settle down after getting three very significant head hits in this season. What what I struggle with is on one hand, I believe that the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness allows us to make bad decisions with our own lives, whether it's jumping out of airplanes, riding motorcycles without helmets, rock climbing, chain smoking cigarettes, whatever the yeah. case may be. We all have an inalienable right to screw up our lives if we choose to do so. And Tua, 
on one hand, should be allowed to play football whenever, however, wherever he wants, as long as he can get the medical clearance. The broader question for the NFL, and it became existential a decade ago, do we want to have concussions be such a focal point that parents won't let their kids play football? And the problem with Tua, and the juxtaposition, Peter, is Tua and Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett's had two concussions this year. Kenny Pickett isn't a guy that the Today Show wants to talk about when he has a concussion. For whatever reason, however it happened, it just happened. When it's Tua, it's a huge deal. When it's Tua, and I think because of the combination of what happened against the Bills, and they still insist to this day it wasn't a concussion. Yeah, right. And then the Thursday night game against the Bengals when he was playing and shouldn't have been, and we saw the the fencing posture and the stretcher, and it just it created a critical mass that you can never separate Tua Tonga-Vailoa from concussions. At any time he has one, it's going to be a big deal. That, to me, is where, as I said earlier, the football machine is going to hope and root that the guy chooses not to play and then hope and root that doctors won't let him. And then if worse comes to worse, there's just not going to be a job for him. It's going to be what happened to Colin Kaepernick in a completely different context where I think the end game here, if Tua chooses to keep playing and keeps having concussions at one point, it's going to be one too many and he's not going to find employment in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just think right now, one of the things that, even taking everything you say into consideration. Uh, and you're right. Tua happens to be, uh, you know, at the time he got hurt, the team was hot as blazes. Uh, and and everything was on the up and up. The Dolphins were the young, growing, explosive team of this year. So if their quarterback has two head incidents in a five-day span, then that is going to get a lot of attention. And I think now what what I would do, you know, and I'm glad that the NFLPA has requested, uh, you know, a deeper look into this because, Mike, we saw the play in the second quarter where Tua's head snaps back and hits the ground. And look, I am not impugning the character, intelligence, uh, anything or the efficacy of these spotters, okay? But I want you to watch this play. Almost for anybody, <clears throat> but clearly for Tua Tonga Valoa, who's had a lot of problems. And watch. I mean, if you isolate on him, which you clearly can do right here, that has to be looked at. You know, he's got to come out of the game at that point and have his head looked at again. And, uh, you know, I, I, and again, I don't mean to say that anybody did a bad job here, but you've just got to be more cognizant of players who have had significant issues. And when you see that, you can't say, ah, well, normal football play. You say, wait a second, time out, get him on the sidelines, get Bridgewater in for as long as it takes. We need to look at Tua Tonga-Valoa and we need to do a significant exam. Peter, you're far more diplomatic than me. I'll say it. Somebody screwed up. Somebody failed to do their job, and they should be ashamed of themselves. And I think of things I heard John Madden say back when he was retired but still very much involved and at the forefront of protecting players. He would be livid when there was an incident. Case Keenum, remember that when he was with the Rams in Baltimore. There was another player, defensive back for the Chargers, where it was clear he should have been out of the game. And no one bothered to do anything about it. And John Madden's attitude was, if these people aren't going to do the job, find somebody else who will do the job. Because this is a fairly important job to be spotting this. And the way the NFL tries to stick handle its way around the issue is to say, as Dr. Alan Sills told NFL Network this week, they look for the brain trauma and the associated injury behavior, which with Tua... You don't need associated behavior. And, oh, by the way, we saw associated behavior back in week three, and nobody did anything about it then by way of keeping him out of the game. When you have a guy who has hit his head against the ground twice this year and had a negative reaction to it, he hits his head against the ground, that should be enough to at least look at him. And the bigger issue I have, Peter, is how does a day go by? And it's not until the coaches are watching the film the next day that somebody recognizes something wasn't right. With all those people employed by the team, with all those individuals, with access to social media where the video was making the rounds, 
How does it take that long for the light bulb to go off over someone's head? And I'll tell you this, and Sims made the point yesterday, you can't see it on the TV copy, but Sims is absolutely right. On the coach's film, you see one or two offensive linemen urgently move toward Tua after he struck his head on the ground. What was said on the sideline? How are the players properly empowered? We saw what Nelson Aguilar did. Watch here. Watch a couple of the guys start moving toward him. The guy there that was at the 40-yard line, he starts going right toward Tua. I suggested yesterday, Peter, there should be one person on each sideline who is there solely for being someone any player can go to and say, I think you should take a look at Tua or whoever, where you can just go up to them and that's what they're there for. Because you know, you know what the sideline's like. Everybody's got a job to do and everybody's focused on it. And you have to pierce through that, I'm trying to do my job here. Well, why not have somebody whose only job is to be that person that a player can go to and say they should be checking out our quarterback? That I that Something like that needs to happen to keep situations like this from falling through the cracks as they seem to do from time to time. Well, the question is, Mike, how many people are you going to assign to this? I mean, you now have two yep. people upstairs who are watching this and theoretically you've got uh you know a trainer and medical pe- medical people on the sidelines i mean at some point as you say you've got to ask the people whose job it is to watch for things like this to do a better job and when i say i'm not impugning the character or whatever w- they clearly miss this okay so what I'm saying is you have to err more on the side of caution than currently you are erring. And again, I think there are going to be some coaches who are going to say, said, well, you know, you can't be taking guys out willy-nilly all the time just because, you know, they got a hard hit on the ground or something. Yes, yes, you do. You do. You know, if you want to be able to sleep at night and have a good conscience about this sport, you have to take plays like that and you have to react, you know, in the moment. You can't react a day later. And the overriding goal is to avoid second impact syndrome when someone who has a concussion is allowed to keep playing and gets a second one. And it's a proven medical fact. It can cascade into a horrible outcome up to and including death that's what the nfl is trying to avoid and uh let's focus on the game just briefly because now teddy bridgewater's in for the dolphins against the patriots loser is done we saw what the patriots or excuse me what the dolphins did earlier this year when tua wasn't playing that offense doesn't operate the same way do you have faith in teddy to be able to go into gillette stadium on the road and get a win against the patriots i do Uh, because I look at the Patriots right now and I see a really dysfunctional offense, um, a mistake-prone offense, and, you know, whatever, uh, you know, uh, support this week that Ramondre Stevenson got. Ramondre Stevenson, two weeks in a row, has made horrible plays at huge moments for his team. The Patriots basically lost the last two games in part because of either physical or mental decisions. And again, in part, I'm not saying they lost it because of these, but they lost in Vegas and they lost to the Bengals at home because of either mental or physical decisions or or actions by Ramondre Stevenson. You know, in starting the lateral play or fumbling uh, inside the 10, when the Patriots are going in to win that game. So, but but that is what the Patriots have become. They become a team that makes the huge mistake at a bad time. Now, that's not necessarily going to happen on Sunday, but I would rather place my faith in an offense that has explosive players and a good, but not great, quarterback uh, you know, one of the better backup quarterbacks in the league. I'll place my faith in Teddy Bridgewater, Tyreek Hill, and Jalen Waddell. Well, we'll see how it plays out for those two teams on Sunday. 
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.